thank you for joining me this morning. No, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Good. Let yeah. me begin by getting maybe your initial thoughts on uh, the notice given to the residents there. You know, move and uh, or move or you mm. will be moved. I think is a yeah. message that has <laughs> been sent out to them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting because I was talking, I had a uh, conversation with someone of, uh, from the Kenya Urban Roads Authority and according to him, um, these discussions have been going on for the last, they've had discussions about this particular link road for about four years. Four years. And from what he tells me, there has been compensation given to both the people who live in, along that area okay. and the structure owners. Now, that, that is his word against... Uh, uh, yes, yeah. yes, we don't have proof. We don't have proof. Who of are, it, if anyone has been paid, who yeah. and how much. Yeah. So, okay. so that's what he tells me. But this problem is, it, it's actually... These are now historical problems that come out of um, poor planning, as we say. Um, in fact, this particular link road even appears in, in, a, in a paragraph in a famous book called Planet of Slums mm -hmm. by Mike Davis, where he uh, talks about a previous regime that allowed people to settle onto this particular uh, link road area, um, allowing certain people to put structures there to collect, to collect rent. And then now when uh, the new with, with um, changes in, in, in authority and people wanting to put up uh, some of these infrastructure projects, now we are getting ba back to a problem that was created where now we want to put uh, this infrastructure that had been planned, I think, in 1962. Um, this uh, Link Road 12 had been planned in 1962, and then, but now there are people on it. No. Of course, it's not something that we can just say, oh, just remove them because we have to recognize the dignity of, of, of uh, human beings. We have to, the constitution itself gives uh, states that Kenyans have, uh, Kenyan citizens have the right to decent and a adequate mm -hmm. uh, housing. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a way in which it, this, uh, these processes are, 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 thought, are thought through, um, are thought through properly such that it's not just remove people, move them elsewhere, and then we end up now with what we are seeing. In, we saw in another part of Kibera, in the Jamhuri area, where people were removed from the railway reserve, uh, settled somewhere um, under this World Bank project. They were supposed to now be uh, settled into some uh, houses that were built. But uh, from what we saw, I think it was uh, a week or two ago, mm -hmm. it was more of evictions. Then, yeah, yeah, rather, than yeah. resettlement. And, and you could definitely see the dissolution, uh, the sort of the, the looks on the faces of the residents there as you know, bulldozers were sort of really removing yeah. their homes and that sort of thing, and, and very worrying indeed. Constant, I want, I want to touch your, your, your brain on one or two things briefly, but before that, let me take our viewers to Kisumu County. Yes, yes, we can. There's a, there, there's a lot more we can do, but we have to go down to the fundamental uh, issue of land use, uh, looking at land tenure and land issues, which are very sensitive in Kenya, as we know. But we, uh, but that, and that, and that takes us down to, again, planning. Okay, we have a very good land act, um, land policy, um, also land use policy that was uh, launched, I think, two two weeks ago by the, the Ministry of Lands, um, and then we also have the Nairobi Urban Integrated Development Plan, which we've talked about. In we the have talked about on this same past. show. That's right. And we can also go, and, and and we have the ability to 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 go down to the area of district planning, local area planning, where now we start planning our our neighbourhoods, and City Hall has to take take that up. Okay, I know I, I had a discussion with the CEC a few weeks ago and he told me it's, it's one of the, the areas of interest, but I think they've got a few challenges of, of funds. And one of the things I said is, look, people are actually interested in participating in the planning process. Uh, neighborhood associations are interested in participating in the planning process. Community-based groups, even in the informal uh, areas, are interested in participating because people know that it's for, it's for their own good. And if we can come up, um, we can have this planning going on in a transparent, accountable, and uh, participatory manner, which I uh, recently w identified as three of uh, three key challenges facing planning within within the city: transparency, accountability, and uh, participation. Transparency, accountability, accountability and, and partici participation. participation. Yeah, okay. If we're able to handle uh, planning at different local levels, you know, people of South B, people of Kibera, people of Kangware, people of Gatina, peop you know, and, and do it that way, then. We'll be, ab we'll be able also to communicate to them better so that they know that here, you know, there was a road planned in 1962, but we would like you, your human settlements, to grow in this way. Therefore, we'll put you, uh, to this is how we, we're going to put you over the next 10, 
uh, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Then we can start, it will be easier to do some of these things. Mm -hmm. But when we come up with, a, you know, this top bottom approach, and then we, we, we only want to be seen to be doing mega projects, you know, so now we want to do a big highway here, oh, remove these people from there, they are, these are illegal structures. We, we end up just getting into uh, spatial contestation, which is going on all over the city now. Um, two weeks ago, a few meters from, actually the last two weeks, a few meters from, from here, we've had car wash dealers being arrested mm -hmm. all over, you know. We have um, informal markets being d demolished every, o every other day. Yet we, 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 we are not sitting down and saying, let's allocate land for these uh, particular uses, for these other uses within uh, our, our, our neighborhoods. Within our neighborhoods. So I'm, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of those who live on that uh, road reserve. Um, on that piece of land that you know will be a highway will be built on it. So let's say you've been given some money. What can you do with that money in, in the kind of Nairobi we live in today, in terms of buying land, in terms of and and and, and I guess the convenience of Kibera is that you can easily access any part of the county from there. Sometimes you imagine if you work in industrial area, you're able to easily cycle there. Where do they move to? You know, I think. You know that's that's now where part of the problem. Honestly speaking, even if you give monetary compensation, yes. you're not really compensating someone for who can walk to industrial area or can walk to uh, CBD or wh wherever he works, and and that's why I'm, I'm, I I'll take take us back to the fundamental issue of how do we want to structure neighborhoods within within the city. Um, slum upgrading projects have unfortunately tended to fail because we fail to analyze some of the social, cultural, and economic factors facing informal settlements. Mm -hmm. um, good example that happened in parts of Kibera was where uh, people were, were, were moved, new high-rise structures were built, they were moved into these the high-rise structures, mm -hmm. but after a short while they moved out. And some of the reasons given were very basic reasons. Someone tells you, I used to use the front of my house to sell vegetables. Now I'm on fifth floor. You know, I'm, I don't have any income. Small things like that that uh, communities would, uh, would talk about. And that's why the participatory element be becomes, becomes, key. becomes critical. Okay. Um, of course, the, the problem of slums, uh, let's call them informal settlements, as, as uh, is the preferred language, is, is much wider and we can probably write several, <laughs> write a whole thesis on it. Um, because it covers, again, as I said, land use, there's, um, economic challenges, social, their cultural issues, mm -hmm. even even the way people live within informal areas. Mm -hmm. It's not just you go and live anywhere. You know, there are certain zones, maybe people from certain re regions um, in, in, inhabit. There is economic, economic challenges be, be behind whether they want to live with, within those kind of uh, mm -hmm. structures or within sto stone structures. You know, for, for us, we tend to think, let's build them houses. And they'll and, and, and they'll be okay, mm -hmm. but there's much more that comes, and there's also political influence that 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 comes in, into place because these are voters that we, we call yes. a spade a spade. Yes. These are voters. These and an moving them last year yeah. may, may not have made sense exactly. during an election. Yeah, yeah. There's an area MCA who relies on. We're talking of is it uh, 60 meters wide? Yes. 12 kilometers. I mean, if if if, if you're the the member of the county assembly mm -hmm. from that area. I mean, and that we're talking about a place that has 80,000 people per square kilometer. That is your entire constituency. Mm -hmm. Okay, obviously there will be that uh, kind of element of, of influence. Um, so there are many, several factors that come in. And uh, it's unfortunate because even monetary compensation may not be the immediate way forward. Uh, way forward. Yes, because I'm trying to yeah. imagine what can you do with that money. I mean, let's to take a look at the, the wider picture of, of urban planning in, in Nairobi County. We have plans, and I think the last time you were here you said... In terms of adequate plans, I guess to some extent we have, right? Yeah. Between the Nairobi Integrated Urban Development Plan and the others that you've mentioned as well. Um, but the implementation then becomes staggered because of either resources or politics or, 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 or different factors. And so where roads should have been built, where different structures should have been put, other people have already come on board. So let's look at the next 10 years. And, and I'd like to know from you, what should a good county government be thinking about so that we don't have these situations pop can we sort of preempt how can we catch up with the plan because the plans yeah. are there but we are now struggling to catch up with them i'll go back to those what other what, yeah. have, what have other countries also yeah, done I, I, to, to yeah i'll to go back to those three elements that i talked about um, transparency accountability and participation if the county could you know um, speak out about show us these things make them well i i may have access to them as a planner because i have my networks 
But if every, every other Kenyan could know that this is where these structures are supposed to be, this is where this kind of uh, land use is supposed to be, this is where this kind of roads are supposed to be, this is what we want to do here. Mm -hmm. You know, that element of transparency, and even make even in the approvals process for, for building and, and, and construction, if we could have proper transparency and accountability, then mm -hmm. it would be easier to engage and bring out and uh, make people participate. Because participation is not going and asking people, she doesn't know need Hatuna maji, hatuna barabara. So then you write it down. There's, <laughs> there's much more that comes to it. Okay, it has to come in that the, the people of different neighborhoods have to have be able to express their vision towards the the planners in the county, and then the and the planners in the county work closely with them and with with other people, other stakeholders like us who can assist, such that we we end up. Um, avoiding this kind of con contestation that, that's coming out. Okay. And I think, I guess my last question to you would then be, as we look at the looming demolition, in your view, can it be, uh, and, and again, I'm coming back to this, because my worry is people getting hurt, possible loss of life, when the demolitions do happen, if they happen this Saturday. Could there be maybe a more structured way to remove them? Could there be more engagement with local leaders? Uh, I guess that's what's, that's what's really bothering me at, at this yeah. time. W what I know is, as we speak at the moment, there's a meeting going on between National Land Commission, uh, Kenya National Commission of, for Human Rights, uh, Kenya Urban Roads Authority, and the um, representatives from the community. Okay. And I, I, I know that they're actually in a meeting right now as, right now as, as, as we speak. speak. And my wish is that from there, from such engagement, uh, they'll be able to come up with a proper structured way in which they go about this. Because it's, it's very clear, I mean, that the demolition is going to go on. Um, but they have, if, if they can come up with a more dignified way of doing it, such that we don't have loss of life and loss of uh, personal belongings of, of people, mm -hmm. then probably we can also start thinking of, of, of the wider picture. Yes, and, and, and as we wrap up, I mean, if you look at some of the statistics, so Kibra, for example, has a population of about 95,000 people per square kilometer, some rough figures according yeah. to government estimates. Uh, when you calculate the amount of acreage required in the slum in order for the road to pass through, you need about 0 0.324 square kilometers, which means it's possible that when the demolitions do happen, some 30,000 or so people could be rendered homeless in just one week. And you can imagine if 30,000 people are not happy with what you're about to do, it could become something else. So nevertheless, very worrying. We certainly hope that that meeting that you've talked about, Constant, will uh, resolve and, and bring about an easier way, a more dignified way, and I like the use of that word, uh, to sort of uh, remo sort of give those who are there a chance to leave, you know, for the road to be built and to have a place where they can resettle after that.